According to the UK paper, The Telegraph, a no-deal Brexit, meaning leaving the European Union without any formal arrangements for a future trade relationship, would be akin to the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's a little hyperbolic, but financial journalist Ambrose Evans Pritchard says the markets would seize up, confidence would shatter, German car sales in the UK would absolutely collapse, and Eurozone consumption would flounder. Could that contagion spread here? Think Markets UK Chief Analyst Naeem Aslam has been watching every headline out of London and from the Heritage Foundation, Niall Gardner, who served as an aide to British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Naeem, I'll begin with you. You're on the ground there. U.S. markets stopped the blood flow just after UK Prime Minister Theresa May held a news conference three hours ago. And in it, she said there will be a Brexit. The people voted for it. But I'll cut the best deal I can versus cold turkey divorce. How closely is our stock market tied to the Brexit battle right now? And how are people on the ground looking at this? Sorry, thanks for having me. First, I wanted to make a comment. I think Brexit chaos is the biggest circus of the modern politics. Markets are so closely tied up that we are reacting. We are seeing huge reactions to every single headlines coming out of this entire uh, agenda that uh, Brexit has. So, for instance, last night when she made a press conference, we saw investors having a very opposite positions mm -hmm. because they didn't believe that what she is saying is going to actually happen. And that that's the another press conference to today that was unnecessary because Sterling dropped after the after the press conference we made another low for the day and if you look at the FTSE in terms of a contagiousness and everything else you can see housing sector energy sector retail sector everything we have seen a massive sell-off and RBS Royal Bank of Scotland one of the major bank over in the UK has dropped nearly over nine percent mm -hmm. why if you ever wanted to see that how does this disorderly Brexit looks like, this is the exact situation where you can look at and that will show you. Now, to answer the second part of your question, whether this can spread to the U.S., not necessarily. Okay. Because I think it's more about the domestic and it's more about the relationships with the EU and that that's where the most of the factors are okay. uh, looking at. Uh, I don't think any, any immediate effect of this one uh, or contagiousness going to the U.S. Well, that's, that's good news. But, Niall, do you agree with the Telegraph's apocalyptic view? And where do you see Prime Minister May's deal approved by her team, which now has to be voted upon in the U EU and the U.K.'s parliament? I mean, is it alive or is it dead in the water? Well, I think, firstly, with regard to... Um Theresa May's Brexit deal, which I think is a very bad deal for Britain, actually, in many ways. It is a, a surrender to the European Union, and the pages of the Telegraph have been full of articles calling this uh, an absolute surrender to, uh, to the EU. I would say that uh, May's deal is pretty much dead in the water, because it has to go before uh, the House of Commons on December the 10th for a vote, if it goes uh, through to that, that stage at all. And if it does reach the House of Commons, then I think at least 100 Conservative MPs will vote against the deal. The Labour Party will, will vote uh, solidly against the deal as well. Uh, this deal is going nowhere at all. And so for Theresa May, I think the best option for her is to reverse course and to seek a, uh, a renegotiation with the European Union, because this deal isn't going to go anywhere. Otherwise, I think we're going to face a no-deal uh, scenario. But I think that Theresa May is in denial right now, and her press conference uh, earlier uh, this, this afternoon I, I thought was, uh, was quite... Uh, it was very unrealistic in terms of her assessment of where things are. Well, uh, maybe, maybe she doesn't see it right, but she was saying the people voted for it, we're going to do it, but we can't just do cold turkey. Naeem, there are businesses, and we as a business network look at that. They said go with this deal. They seem to feel that it is something that uh, the, the Brits should embrace. Diageo, for example, I suppose, did, they put out some statements saying, you know what, this is not a bad thing and we should go for it, and, and they're showing some business confidence in it. They congratulated her. Um, tell us what you think about something like that and the other businesses that may be uh, adversely affected if there is a no-deal Brexit, cold turkey? What I can sell, uh, tell you is that the housing market over in the UK has declined enormously. Even mm -hmm. London is unstable, one of the most loved city in the world. 
and it is incredibly difficult for businesses to employ multilingual uh, people who can come and work for them. So London, I mean, the, this Brexit situation has created enormous amount of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And for businesses, that's just nothing but a poison pill. Well, uh, Niall, in the end, if, her, uh, if, if the UK Parliament is obdurately opposed to anything she does, does she lose her job? And if so, who, who is next in line? Business does not like Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party. Well, I think that if Theresa May loses a House of Commons vote on her signature uh, EU negotiation, then I think that uh, certainly she would have to go and you need new leadership within the Conservative Party. There isn't going to be a general election until 2022, mm -hmm. so she would be replaced by someone like Boris Johnson, uh, for example, someone on the, on the Brexiteer side of the party, and then there would be a renegotiation with the European Union. But I don't see how she can remain as the Prime Minister if she sticks to a deal that is fundamentally opposed by a huge uh, portion of her own party and is deeply unpopular with the British public as well, according to a poll this morning less than 20 percent of the British public back the new uh, May proposal. So it's not a, exactly a very good start, actually, mm -hmm. for the Prime Minister. Niall and Naeem, thank you very much for joining us. And Naeem, thanks for staying up late, uh, my you. friend. We appreciate it.